Hi, I'm Avery Davidson. Thank you for joining us for This Week in Louisiana Agriculture, the only TV show bringing Louisiana farmers and consumers together every week. My partner, Kristen Oaks White, is off this week. South Louisiana is home to a wide variety of farmers, as you know if you watch this show. Some grow sugarcane, others catch crawfish, some drag nets for shrimp, and others grow the rice served with that shrimp. This week, Twyla's Carl Wiggers takes us to the Deep South, to Terrebonne Parish, where he introduces us to a father and son who have raised cattle for more than 40 years. Farming is a team sport for these two. This is Ronnie Trish. I'm pretty much full-time cowboy, I guess is what you'd call it. <laughs> I've been in the cattle business, working with cattle pretty much all my life. And that's his dad, Lloyd. Together, they raise around 300 head of cattle outside of Houma, Louisiana. I just love to take care of animals, especially cattle. I mean, uh, I had horses. I, I had a dog or two horns, but uh, I don't care for dogs and cats. And I love cows. It's something you gotta love. I mean, anybody in the cattle business knows that you, you gotta love it to be in it. It's something very unique and it's, and it's rewarding. Like if you got a sick calf and you bring him back to health, man, that's, that's rewarding to us, you know. Lloyd says that cattle offer the daily challenge that you just don't seem to find off the farm. But as Ronnie explains, today those challenges are less about the cow and more about the struggle to make a living in the industry. The rising cost of, of, of everything, you, you know, your, your feed. The land is getting short. Your medicine. Everything going sky high. Equipment. Bailing twine, $52 a pack for bailing twine. Who ever heard of that? Used to pay $17, $18, you know. 15 years ago, a ton of ryegrass was $400. Now it's $1,400. As that money gets tight, Ronnie and Lloyd explain how they get creative around the farm working with their hands. You also got to watch not to, to sink all your income into it because, uh, I mean, you can fall short of, you know, breakdowns or, like I said, just the, the cost of medicine and equipment. I love to tangle with things. I like to make a lot of things. I like to build things. Uh, all them boys can tell you I just about repair anything. I didn't have but a sixth grade education, and I'd match myself against a college guy. I guarantee you. While that was more common for his generation, I'll tell you this, it was not for his lack of effort. I spent two years in the service trying to finish my high school, never could do it. Uh, come out of service, I tried it again, I still couldn't do it, so I said, well, the hell with it, I knew enough. <laughs> with a work ethic that would not be matched, Lloyd raised Ronnie and his brother around the cattle business, which inspired Ronnie to follow in his father's footsteps. And Ron and I, every day we together, every day. And man, that's a plus for me. And down here, very few people in the cattle business have kids that, that is trying to follow them. They, they're not doing it. To come out here and, and see the cattle is peaceful and uh, to see if you have any new calves. Uh, it, it's just the love for it. I mean, that's all I can explain. If, if you don't love this, you, you wouldn't be in it. Trust me. I'm proud to see it in one way and then in another way I know how hard it is. I wish they could have took up, you know, a better, better trade, but what you gonna do? I mean, you need the farmers, you need farmers. And it's getting to be tough for farmers right now. Most father and sons don't have that opportunity. Of course, we, we butt heads, we do, but at the end of the day, you put that aside and, and, and go on, you know. It's, for us, it's just an everyday deal. It's, this is just what we do, you know. I wouldn't have it any other way. It's also interesting to note that in the last few years, the Trishes have started to raise crawfish on their land to help diversify their farm's income. And Avery, I got to tell you, I'm really excited about the crawfish that mm -hmm. we keep talking about on the show. This is now the second week we've talked about <laughs> crawfish. And it's that time of year with, you know, with Lent starting today, actually. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I'm really excited about the crawfish season coming. Well, you know, it might be a couple of hiccups here and there. We're going to hear about that in a moment. But I just thought that the Trishas were such interesting people. Where do you find these stories, Carl? I actually got this story. I called a, uh, the Parish Farm Bureau president down there, Mr. Tom Ellender. And he, uh, he got me in connection with the, uh, the Trish fa the guys. But mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to lie. We really kind of depend on, like, you know, Farm Bureau field staff, you know, mm -hmm just connections that we have throughout the company and uh, just farm friends that we make, LSU. But, you know, I need help. We need help sometimes. <laughs> we you know? do need help. We need lots <laughs> of help. really honest here. You know, I would love to get ideas, you know, from more people outside of this office, outside of our company even. Um, so if you have ideas, viewers, mm -hmm. we're open to ideas. Go to our Facebook page, send us a message, say, hey, I think this family would make a great story. You know, they have something you know, maybe different about what they do, just send us a line, drop us a line on Facebook, our website, wherever, uh, and we'd love to see them on our show as well. Yep, viewers always have the best ideas, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about those crawfish right now, Carl. Thank you very much. The Louisiana crawfish season is off to a rough start. Last week we told you crawfish production is down 65% from this time last year. This week Twyla's Neil Malasson travels to Kaplan, Louisiana to talk to a crawfish producer to find out when you can get more and cheaper crawfish near you. On a foggy morning, rice and crawfish producer Aaron Lee starts off bringing in someone else's catch. It may seem a fishy way to start the day, but it's going to be used here. These fish heads are the bait for crawfish traps, which his worker Judd Bertrand is bringing in. As you can see, though, the crawfish traps aren't very full right now. It just seems like they make, they'll make a break for it, like they'll want to start biting, and then, and then it'll drop off, and then we'll catch a freeze or a foggy day like this. The fog takes the oxygen out of the waters, which isn't good for the crawfish. Even on sunnier days, fishing is down from this time last year. Last year at this time, we was catching fairly, fairly well. The size of the crawfish are up and down. Uh, they have some nice ones mixed in, but uh, with mostly small, small to medium sized crawfish that we're catching personally. Lee says he's not too worried. He thinks he and other fellow crawfish farmers have gotten spoiled from the mild winters of the past few years and that they should soon see a normal season. This is fairly a normal season to us. Uh, used to, we used to not start fishing like when I was younger growing up, we used to not start fishing till the end of January, beginning of February. So, I mean, just these past few seasons, we really hadn't had much of a winter down here. That's another thing to think about. As Lee heads out with another load of crawfish. He's considering expanding his rice operation, which will mean more crawfish acres next year. Only two things are in his way, available acres and a ghost from the past. We stopped farming after Hurricane Rita. Uh, and turn a lot of ground loose and we're just getting back into the rice. Uh, this, this, I think this will be our fifth crop since Hurricane Rita. In the meantime, things are warming up and that means more crawfish coming to a store near you. For this week in Louisiana agriculture, I'm Neil Malasson. The weather forecast over the next couple of weeks does call for warmer and wetter weather for Louisiana in general. That's good news for basin fishermen who needed to help their crawfish spawn. In the meantime, we've got some local boiled prices for you. There's not a lot in the way of changes in prices. In fact, here in Baton Rouge, live and boiled crawfish are exactly the same price as they were last week at $4.69 and $5.69 per pound. In the Lafayette area, they're certainly cheaper, about $3.75 per pound live and $4.99 boiled. In Shreveport, you'd expect this, they're a little bit more expensive, but not by much. The cheapest we found was $4.50 for live and $5.75 for boiled. Keep in mind that these are the cheapest prices we found and that they tend to change on the weekend, so you've got to keep your eyes peeled for the best deals. You see what we did there? Keep them peeled. It's important to always ask before you eat, especially with crawfish. You got to make sure it's from Louisiana, right? Well, you now have another way to be sure that what you're eating is local. The Louisiana Department of Agriculture and Forestry has revamped its certified Louisiana program and now has four labels to help you know that what you're buying is fresh and culturally authentic. Here are the four new labels you'll see. The first is the certified Louisiana logo. That means it was grown, manufactured, processed, or produced, or substantially transformed in the state of Louisiana. The certified Cajun logo means the product meets the previous criteria, 
but is also representative of Acadian culture. The certified Creole logo is reserved for products made in Louisiana and of Creole heritage. The fourth logo is the certified farm to table and has the same criteria as the certified Louisiana logo. There's a lot of excitement in the local food movement, right? Why do people eat Louisiana foods? Because they're delicious, right? And when people pick up that package, we want to have a recognizable symbol there and a symbol that means something. There is a small fee to get the certified Louisiana logos on your product. It's about $55 and that lasts for three years. The 2018 State Livestock Show is wrapping up this weekend with youngsters taking home ribbons and memories. While the event is important for these young people, the lessons they learn caring for their animals over the years is what helps them grow into young men and women. Macy Sheck Snyder of Donaldsonville wins second place in her group for her U. That sounds like the end of the story, and it sort of is. But it's the journey that took her to the LSU Ag Center State Livestock Show that made this moment worthwhile. I can't complain. I've had a very successful few years showing livestock, um, thanks to my dad. <laughs> Macy's dad is Neil Sheck Snyder. All of his children, from his 23-year-old son to his daughters Eden and Macy, showed livestock as part of the 4-H program. It's something he did, too. When I was in 4-H in the 80s, I showed cattle, I showed pigs, and I showed sheep, but the species I enjoyed the most was sheep. I really enjoyed the sheep. We were successful with them, and I had a background in sheep. Macy has followed in her dad's footsteps and grooms her youth. This one was the Supreme Champion U at our parish show. Like grooming, it's just one step closer to bigger accomplishments. It teaches me a lot of responsibility and life lessons. I get to meet a lot of new friends and spend time with my family back here. Macy also shows Angus cattle, but showing hogs, that's her favorite according to her dad. Like with all of his children, Neil would help out early on. As they got older, the parent, the parent involvement got a little less and their involvement got a little more. So they kind of took it, help them when they're small, they learn the ropes, and then once they learn the ropes, they take it. And basically, my daughter does all of her work in the afternoon on her own, and she may spend two hours in a barn every day. It's time well spent, not because of a second place ribbon, but because of their involvement in 4-H. And with the LSU Ag Center, Neil got to see his children become winners in life. I think they uh, became good adults. They're hardworking individuals, and uh, I'm very proud of them. As you saw, Sheck Snyder took home the red ribbon, second place for her group for her U. As of this taping, she had not shown her heifer and hog yet. We'll update this story on Facebook whenever we find out how she did. Recently, the LSU Ag Center invited sixth graders to campus for a closer look at bugs, nutrition, and even drones. Twyla's Craig Gotro shows us how LSU students got involved in teaching these children about all the different career opportunities in agriculture. Clothing made from alligators, drones flying through the air, and crawling giant cockroaches were all part of sixth grade days, an event organized by the LSU Ag Center to show the diverse careers related to agriculture. Shiloh Judd, a graduate entomology student, saw it as an opportunity to educate students about insects. People think bugs are scary, they're dangerous, and some of them are, but we'd like to point out to the kids today that there are good bugs and there are bad bugs, and hopefully show them which ones are which. Hannah Johnson, an LSU College of Agriculture undergraduate student, spent her time telling students about her experiences in the college. For those students who answered her questions correctly, they were rewarded with flavor-infused crickets, which the students willingly ate. I'm actually an agriculture education major. I love children. I like informing people, especially about agriculture. I'm very passionate about agriculture as well as the issues. The event allowed students to learn about agriculture outside the classroom, but that information reinforced what they were learning in the classroom. My kids have had the most fun um, creating the food chain. That's something that they're studying in classes, so they get to implement it here in real life, and I, I appreciate that experience. Nearly 2,500 students attended the event, which also included visits to other colleges on LSU's campus. The LSU Ag Center hosts other events like this throughout the year to introduce students to careers in agriculture. There's always a good reason to learn more about agriculture and for women who are involved in farming and ranching, a special event is coming up. 
February 22nd and 23rd are the dates for the 2018 Women in Agriculture Conference. Here you're looking at video from 2015. This year organizers will host the conference in Alexandria. The keynote speakers for this year's conference are Sarah Calhoun, a Montana farm woman who created her own line of work pants because the ones in stores, well, just didn't fit women well when they were working. The other is Kimberly Ratcliffe, a woman who left her job at Bloomberg in New York to go back to her family's ranch. When you look at Louisiana, there's about 28,000 farms in the state of Louisiana, and about 3,500 of those are owned and operated by women. So women play a real integral role in, in agriculture in our state. And even if you look nationwide, there's about 2.1 million farms in the nation. 14% of those are owned and operated by women. The Women in Agriculture Conference starts on Thursday, February 22nd, with everyone meeting up at the Holiday Inn in downtown Alexandria for one of two tours. That's followed by a reception at 6. Then the full day of the conference starts at 8 a.m. on Friday the 23rd. There's still time to sign up. Registration is $50. You'll find a link to the Louisiana Women in Agriculture Conference page on our Facebook page and on our website at twilatv.org. Still to come on Twyla, how do you avoid falling off of a fiscal cliff? You call a special session, we'll have a preview. But first, AJ Sabine takes us down the boulevard for a delicious farm to table ribeye. Stay with us. Farm to table may be a relatively new trend, but it certainly builds on old traditions. In this week's Feasting on Agriculture, AJ Sabine goes to Mansour's on the boulevard in Baton Rouge to taste the way the French have been building a cuisine with farm fresh products for generations. Feasting on Agriculture with A.J. Sabine is brought to you by the Louisiana Crawfish Promotion and Research Board. Louisiana Crawfish, ask before you eat. By the Louisiana Rice Promotion Board, think rice. And by the Louisiana Beef Industry Council, beef, it's what's for dinner. Hey there folks, I'm A.J. Sabine and welcome to another exciting edition of Feasting on Agriculture this month it's Old South meets Farm to Table at Baton Rouge's one and only Mansour's on the Boulevard. <music> Joining us now is Chef Chris Motto. And Chef, you've been here at Mansour's about nine years. How have you seen food palettes change in terms of Farm to Table? in that time? Oh, well, you know, there's a lot more options farm to table wise in Baton Rouge. We have all these local farms now that are producing great product and keeping the food miles off the food. You know, the, the faster it gets to me, the, the better I can handle that and, and get it out to the table fresh and delicious. Why is it so important that people have a relationship with the folks that grow the food that you prepare for them in your restaurant? Well, you know exactly what you're getting. You know how the product's been handled. Um, a lot of times they can grow specialty items for me if I need something in particular to create for my dishes. And working with these farmers, just like my fish purveyors and my meat guys, it, it just creates a relationship and allows me to keep moving forward. All right, Chef, let's get started. Here's a beautiful ribeye. Yeah, absolutely. One of my favorite cuts of meat all together. Going to hit it with a little bit of our signature steak rub right here made in house. Now this steak is room temperature, right? I brought it up just a little bit to help the cook evenly, yes. Why is that important? Because I want my ribeye cooked evenly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna want it three different temperatures. We're gonna make it nice and even. So I got a hot little skillet over here. A little grapeseed oil. Mm. And grapeseed oil has a high smoke point. Absolutely. We don't want that to burn, so. All right, we're gonna start some Brussels sprouts to go with this, so. Again, hot skillet. Little Brussels sprouts. Salt. Start getting those flavors working in there. No, well, you get a lot of your produce from Covey Rise. Covey and Rise, from Fullness, Fullness Farms. Farms. Right here in Baton Rouge. Um, beautiful stuff, you know, it's a lot of my inspiration. I wanna use what's seasonal, what's available, what's fresh. Get some nice caramelization on these Brussels sprouts, bring out some of that rich flavor. And for folks at home who may not realize that you've already blanched these a little bit, yes, right? Yes, these have been blanched. Roll and boil salt water, so. And you just added a little garlic? A little garlic and some shallots. There we go. How long about, how long on both sides for this ribeye for a perfect medium rare? Whew. 
it's going to depend on a lot of issues, you know, how hot your skillet is, your flame, thickness of the cut, and everything else. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, that was, what, about two minutes right there on that side? Give another two minutes, and we're going to baste it and get that butter in there and all the herbs and flavor. We're going to take these Brussels sprouts now. This is a little bacon jam I prepared earlier. Chef, what is, bacon jam? what is bacon jam? What is bacon jam? Bacon jam is delicious. Yourself a little taste of that right there. And into this ribeye, we're gonna add some smashed garlic, fresh rosemary and thyme, and then just a smidge of butter, you know? Just a smidge. Did you say, parsley, sage, <laughs> rosemary, and thyme? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, we're gonna bring all those fresh herbs into that meat right there. Chris, if you would, kind of describe to folks what that smells like, what that the garlic and the rosemary. Oh, to me, this is heaven right here. We're gonna let this ribeye just sit just another second or so. Nice marbling, rich flavor in that ribeye. Little curled peppers and onions for some pretty. How about one of these right there? Did you say well? put on some pretty? There you go. Man, it looks good. Now, folks, when we get back, yours truly and Chef Chris Motto here at Mansour's on the boulevard, get to taste this beautiful, beautiful steak. Stick around, we'll be right back. All right, folks, we are back. Thank you so much for sticking around, joining us again, Chef Chris Motto. Tell us what we got in this beautiful plate you've made for us. Right here you have your pan-roasted Brussels sprouts with a beautiful ribeye topped with little candy crawfish tails and oyster mushrooms. Ah, oh, that smells good. Well, you know what, uh, folks? This is the favorite part of the segment for me. I don't know how it is for you, Chris, but uh, I got to get down on this uh, meat right here, this beautiful ribeye that you've slaved over that we just watched you prepare. And you know what? I'm going to go all in. Now, I know that you I'll said... i a little bit of everything, you know? Oh, yeah. I got to get some of this bacon jam that I tasted and some of these... Uh, 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 Fried Brussels, Brussels sprout oh, yeah, leaves. Yeah, nice that's and crisp, what's up, man. Yeah, that's what's up. Mm, really, really good, man. Really good. And if you guys at home want more information about Mansour's on the Boulevard, Farm to Table, Restaurant Week, or Louisiana Beef, you can always log on to our website at twilighttv.org. Come visit Mansour's on the Boulevard. And in fact, I want to hear from you. If you guys have a place that you think that Stuart and I should go and visit, you can always log on to our website at twilighttv.org to get in touch with us. That's all from here, folks. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Feasting on Agriculture with A.J. Sabine was brought to you by the Louisiana Crawfish Promotion and Research Board. Louisiana Crawfish, ask before you eat. By the Louisiana Rice Promotion Board, think rice. And by the Louisiana Beef Industry Council, beef, it's what's for dinner. On February 19th, the Louisiana Legislature will begin a special session to find a solution for the state's billion dollar shortfall. Adding to the deficit are temporary tax measures which will end on June 30th. Governor John Bell Edwards says he believes the House and Senate are on their way to a compromise that helps move the state forward. According to Louisiana Farm Bureau Legislative Specialist Joe Mapes, that compromise will likely revolve around a one penny sales tax, a tax lawmakers originally said they would allow to expire. The conversation began going in, heading towards that special, heading towards the beginning of this year that the legislature and the governor was going to take that one penny off as promised on June 30th and it would be off July 1st. However, the conversation has now morphed more into, well, maybe we'll leave that penny on and put some exem exemptions on it and so it won't be the full penny. If we had a full penny, Avery, we'd have a surplus with the budget deficit that we have. So I think those conversations will occur very passionately in this first special. I'm not so sure we'll meet a resolution that will take us into the regular session, which we can't deal with fiscal matters, and we'll be back to where we were a couple of years in a row, a couple of years ago, where we have a special session on the other. Of course, as you would expect, we'll keep you updated on everything happening at the Capitol throughout the special and regular sessions right here and on our Facebook page. That does it for this edition of Twyla. Be sure to join us next week when we'll have a new story from our friends over at the FFA, as well as an update from Washington, D.C. Until then, you can watch all of our stories online at twylatv.org and be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and on Instagram. For all of us here at Twyla, thanks for joining us. We hope to see you again right here next week.